I would like to invite Madam Breda Kibadi. The impact of this development will be felt far and wide. Today, patients are being diagnosed with stage 3 and 4 cancers due to inadequate diagnostic capacity for early detection. The center will have the clinical, financial, training, research, and socio-economic and environmental impact on Kenyans in the following areas. The early diagnosis and assessment of the response to treatment, meaning we shall be able to diagnose cancer before it's too late, as is currently the case. We will improve on the accuracy in diagnosis and treatment of cancer. We will reduce incurrent or metastasis of cancer. We will improve survivorship. We will reduce in waiting time and, cons and, and cost of cancer treatment. In addition, we will significantly reduce cancer-related mortality. We will also attract medical tourism from East, West, and Central Africa. In addition to all this, we will also conserve foreign exchange used by Kenyans who seek treatment abroad. Not to mention that we'll also support other cancer centers that invest in paired cities through the provision of consumables, FDGs, general support, and personnel training. This is the machine that produces the radioisotopes that are used as a tracer for cancer patients. The radioisotopes are also used to monitor the remission or progression of cancer on the patient. The cyclotron machine comes with radio pharmacy equipment, hot tubs, hot labs that are used to sensitize the radioisotopes to make them ready for patient administration in terms of dosage and safety. This cyclotron will be the first public facility and the largest in Eastern and Central Africa with the capacity to produce consumables for domestic use and for the region. And for that, we are very, very happy and very, very grateful that it has all been accomplished. And I want to say once again, a big congratulations. I'm glad to note that this hospital sees this as a huge opportunity to increase access to quality cancer care by addressing existing gaps and potential future growth through innovative care delivery models. Consequently, the hospital has sought the approval for the construction of the IMIC from the Kenya Nuclear Regulatory Authority and the Pharmacy and Poisons Board to establish the capacity we are witnessing. And we expect a license 
for operations to be issued by the two bodies. But I also want to urge that uh, when you are giving information, particularly regarding the, vac the vaccine, how we are vaccinating Kenyans, it is good to check the facts so that it doesn't seem like, uh, uh, like we are not working when we are actually working very, very hard. I can assure you that uh, we have got a fantastic rollout system, a good system working. There is no confusion. There is no tough wars. It's one team working extremely efficiently together. Every day, increasing the number of persons. We are vaccinating. We are deliberately scaling, uh, escalating downwards, deliberately and slowly. We don't want a hurried system that then means waste, either by A, the way that we vaccinate people without the specific training that they, are, they already have. B, we don't want to waste any vaccines uh, because of uh, the way that we transport them, they transport vaccines without the care that we are supposed to, uh, to care. So I, I just want to know, I just want uh, Kenyans to know that we are doing it deliberately. And today, um, some of us, uh, since we were told yesterday about uh, the 58 pluses, you have been asking me why some of us have not been vaccinated. We had not reached. It was not our turn because the doctors had not allowed me, had not allowed us. But I'm glad and I'm, I'm inviting now my age mates and those above me. Olive, I know you are with you. <laughs> so now I think it has been opened. Willie Zakwali and the other medical doctors allowed us from, uh, from yesterday. Uh, so you and I can speak about that now. Uh, so I, I just want, again, please, thank you, but let's get the facts correct when we are publishing these things. And now we are turning to you again as the savior of Nairobi. But we also want to, to promise Nairobians that uh, we are expanding the health facilities in this city like never before. In addition to the hospitals that we are building, the 19 new hospitals, and completing another six, you, also, you, know, you, all, you all know that we also are opening up 56 hospitals which have been operating on a 12-hour basis to 24 our basis, and that will release, releasing a substantial number of um, uh, hospital beds across uh, the city of Nairobi. So I'm glad to note here that uh, the increase in the capacity that we have got and moving forward with the financing that we are going to give you very, very shortly, you will then have in this facility a total of 98, 98 ICU <laughs> ICU beds, and that's a substantial capacity you have. Now, when we add also the new ones that we put at Nairobi Hospital, the new UN one for the 100-bed facility, then uh, if you do the maths and then you look at what has been happening across the counties, then we can see that in, in, within a year, we have really, really propped up the capacity of Kenya uh, in terms of care for its citizens. Uh, <laughs> Hospitals are supposed to accommodate anybody who turns, off, who turns up who is above the age of 58. Now, I know there are people who are very adventurous, wanting to be older now, you know, and therefore turning up and claiming that you are 58. Two things will happen. A, we can tell. Because if my guy comes and says he's 58, we know she's not 58. Secondly, you have an ID. And therefore, you should be able to prove that you are 58 by simply use of an ID. So to answer the question, uh, all hospitals who are currently, you know, um, who are currently uh, allowed to administer vaccines can do so to persons of 58 and above. Thank you very much. So the cyclotron we are, we are receiving today is part of the imaging equipment that this hospital is installing to ensure comprehensive CASA care. So we have, as we have set up a team that is working on the logistics that will, to transport the consumer bus or the isotopes from this hospital to other parts in the country. And the team is looking at several options, including the drones 
um, the helicopters and other options. Other equipment that has been received and are part of this project are the MRI machine, which is here already and in operation. The patients are already benefiting from this particular machine. It's, it's the highest uh, quality machine. We also have the CT scan machine, which is also installed and also in operation. The equipment we are inspecting soon, and we have just been from uh, Dubai to inspect it with the GE team and our team here from the hospital. This is a PET CT scan um, and also the PET CT. These machines are on the high seas. We, ex we expect them here in the country within the next one week or so. And this is, uh, these machines are, as I said, part of the, the, the project. We are also constructing the hospitality center, which you can see on the right. And this is informed by the need for accommodation where the patients and relatives uh, come uh, here in this facility. And the accommodation center has the capacity of 100 uh, standard rooms. So in order to receive treatment from the IMIC facility, we are working on modalities of how patients can pre-register with us so that we can have efficient provision of the services. So we'll be announcing to Kenyans when this facility then will be operational, hopefully in the next one month or two, so that uh, we can have the registration start. So through the main contractor, we have engaged a company by the name Psychromedical, a US-based company to run the facility for 18 months, within which time they will train our staff who then will take over the operation of the project. And to ensure the facility is fully operational, we have hired the requisite staff to run the procedures as required after the 18 months when the facility will be operated by the US-based company hired through the, the, GA, the GE project. So we have hired nuclear medicine physicists, we have hired med, uh, the cyclotron operators, radio safety officers, production chemists, among other uh, technical staff. CS, to enhance our fight against the COVID-19, um, we have today, as I informed you earlier, and I hope you can have a look, set up a 30-bed capacity ICU, which makes our total ICU uh, beds to 62. And uh, from this afternoon, we, we, we will be able to admit uh, patients, if need be, to this new additional uh, facility, uh, as I said, with 30-bed capacity. CS, we have already appealed to you to help us uh, second some nurses here because this facility will require quite a lot of nurses because ICU care, uh, the, the best practice is one patient per, per nurse. And even if we went to two patients per nurse, we still need about 60 nurses to run this facility um, you know, uh, in an optimal way. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. okay, so that's good. So we sit for two minutes. Uh,